Okay, hello everyone. I am Nicolò and I will talk to you about records and tuples, which is a proposal for a new JavaScript syntax. I'm kind of sorry it's lunch time, I'm a bit hungry right now and those are not food. However, if you stay here with me, I have stickers at the end of records and tuples, so then come and ask me, I have a lot of them. So I worked on this uh, at Galia in partnership with Bloomberg. Before seeing what are records and tuples, let's first see what we are trying to solve with this new JavaScript feature. Uh, so what is our problem? Uh, when programming, there are two main paradigms, two main ways to manage your state, your data. You can have mutable objects or immutable state. And those are usually used in object-oriented programming and in functional programming. However, in many languages, such as JavaScript, you can use both. You don't really have to choose. You can mix them. And in JavaScript, while the mutable part is really good, like we have classes, we have a lot of different things, we don't really have good primitives for immutable state. There are some very good JavaScript libraries that gives us this capability. They are just not included in the language itself. Uh, for example, the most popular one is Immutable.js. How many of you have ever used Immutable.js? Well, quite a few, nice. Uh, I've almost never used Immutable.js, just like once or two times. Uh, however, uh, just for those who don't know what it is, it's a library that provides some structures parallel to the built-in JavaScript objects, but that work in an immutable way. For example, we have maps, which are kind of like objects. And you can update those immutable data structures without modifying the original one, but creating a copy. So for example, we can create a new map where B is 4 instead of 2. The original map is not modified. And then Immutable.js provides some utilities to compare to immutable data structures. For example, we can check if two maps are equal according to Mutable.js, and it has some utilities to convert code back to plain JavaScript. Another popular library is Immer. Uh, Immer uses plain JavaScript objects, so you don't have to learn these parallel, like, immutable data structures. And it provides some utilities to update them in a way that looks mutable, but doesn't really change the original object. So the original object remain, remains unchanged, and we get a new object with updated property. And this is, again, a really good library. The only problem is that, uh, well, it has some problems that I'm going to show. Uh, the main one is that it's a library, so you have to, to include it in your code, and it does not just work. And so, as I was saying, every library has its own problems. And this is not because of the library. It's because JavaScript does not give them the tools necessary to build something that works perfectly. So the one big problem is that you have to learn a completely different things. Uh, you have to learn like this new equivalent of objects and arrays. You have to learn how to get properties from them, how to update them. And so, for example, you cannot write code that both works uh, that works both with plain JavaScript objects and with immutable JS, you have to choose. Uh, and another big problem is that equality is not agreed upon across everything, because JavaScript has its own definition of equality, while, for example, immutable JS has its own different definition of equality. So, for example, if you create a JavaScript set containing an immutable list that only contains 0 and 1, according to JavaScript, it, the set does not contain this other list uh, which looks the same. However, according to the mutable set, to the set in the immutable JS words, the equality here works. And so we like checking if this list is contained returns true. And this is a problem uh, because every library you use, you have to check if it works or not with the immutable library that you're using. Uh, as, an exa as a practical example, assuming that you have a React component and you're using immutable JS, uh, this is a component that at some point gets rendered in the game, 
And let's assume that map renderer is a component that, well, renders the map, the mutable map that we have, and that for some reason this is a very expensive operation. So we want to skip re-rendering the nested component if possible. However, uh, and we're always passing the same map, or at least a map with the same content to this component. So in theory, React could skip rendering it. However, the map is always the same according to mutable.js. Like if we use the equality function of mutable.js, it would have been true for all those maps. However, according to JavaScript, they're all different maps because they're all different objects. And so React re-renders the map renderer component every time. Okay, so with the records and tuples proposal, we are trying to solve these problems. Records and tuples are a new type of JavaScript value. They are similar to object and arrays. They are just immutable. They even have the same syntax except that it's prefixed with a hash. And records and tuples are compared by their contents rather than by reference or by pointer, which is how objects are compared. Like if you have two objects with the same content, they can still be the same object. This is not true for records and tuples. Two records of tuples with the same contents are really the same. Records and tuples are primitives, so they have their own type of. So you can easily check if something is a record rather than a classic object. And they can only contain other primitives. Why there are primitives? Uh, because primitives are already compared checking their contents. For example, two strings are equal if they contain the same charters, even if you didn't create them in the same place. And it's easy to define what deep equality means on primitives because you can just recursively check uh, their contents. For objects, this is more difficult because as we saw, for example, with Immutable.js, there can be different opinions regarding the quality of objects. And also, only using primitives gives us deep immutability guarantees, so giving us some stronger security guarantees. Uh, without having to remember, for example, to freeze every object every time. And a bit more in detail, how are records and tuples compared? Well, first, recursively, so uh, two records are, are equal if every property of the record is equal, and if you find other records and tuples, you check their contents again. Tuples are ordered because they're like arrays, so Two tuples are the same, not only if they contain the same values, but also if they're in the same order. And records are not. So uh, for records, you only check that for a, every given property name, you have the same value, regardless of the definition order. In records and tuples, NAM values and are equal, and positive and negative zero are equal. And this is kind of an edge case, but it's something very important to preserve because it makes it possible to not worry about zeros and nans instead of deep records and tuple structures. And you can still see if two records or two tuples containing positive zero and negative zero are different using object.is, which is how we already check if you have a positive or negative zero, like outside of record or tuple. And finally, since we defined what it means to be equal for a regular tuple directly in the language, it works everywhere. So, for example, it works in map and sets. You can have a map uh, where the key is a tuple or a record, so you can have like a compound key, multiple values in, in the same key. Uh, and also, like every library, uh, every JavaScript library that exists would already know how equality for records and tuples works because it's just the normal JavaScript equality. So if we look again at our React example, but using a record rather than an immutable JS map this time, React does not render the map renderer component every time because the data is the same like for real or actually according to React because it's the same according to JavaScript and not to some specific library that we chose. OK, so records and tuples are immutable, uh, but apps are dynamic, so we need to like, update our state. How do we update records and tuples? We do it in the same way as we update. It's not really update, as we 
create new objects with different contents without modifying the original object. So we can just use spread, for example, to replace some properties records. And for tuples, we can use all the array methods that do not mutate the array, such as filter or map or reduce, all the methods that return a new value without modifying the original value. And what about the other array methods? Uh, so for example, array.push or array.shift. Well, for those, it's easy. You don't really need those methods. You can just use spread. So there are no alternative for those methods that modify the original array. You just create a new tuple, spreading the contents of the original one, and adding one element at the end or at the beginning. And the same is for pop and shift. You can, uh, you can just use lice. Then we have array.fill and array.copy within. Those methods are really specialized for mutating stuff. And it does not make sense to have an immutable version of them uh, because they're used for some like performance critical things where you need to do as few operations as possible. And this is ju not, just not possible with tuples. So they're not supported. And what about the other four array methods? Oh, well, the other three array methods and then the like setting an array element. Like, it makes sense to sort a tuple, to get the sorted version of a tuple. The problem is that the sort array method modifies the original array, and so this doesn't work on immutable things. So let's put aside for a moment the records and tuples proposal, and let's take a quick look at the change array by copy proposal, which is born as a like child proposal of the records and tuples one. Have you ever written like array.splice.reverse or array.slide.source? I have many times because many times I want to like reverse an array without modifying the original version. And having to use two methods is not really clear. Like if I'm reading this code, why do I need to first slice it without any arguments to then reverse it or to then sort it? So the change array by copy proposal introduces alternatives to these methods that mutate the array when it's not really necessary. Uh, for example, instead of array.sort, we now also have array.toSorted, which returns a new array, which is just well sorted. And the same for array.reverse, we have to reverse. And instead of splice, we have to splice. And lastly, for setting a specific element in the array, or well, for creating a new array where a specific element has been replaced, we could use to splice in theory, but let's like that's probably the most hard to use array method. So we are also introducing this array.width that lets you specify a specific entry of the array. And all these methods have been introduced to array to type the array so that they are all consistent. And you can also use them on tuples so that you can just memorize this shared API that works across all the array-like built-ins and you don't have to learn different things depending on whether you want mutable things or immutable things. Okay, back to records and tuples. Uh, we've now seen that records and tuples uh, like are compared recursively, that they are primitives, contain primitives. We've seen which methods we can use on them. Uh, there is one more problem. There are primitives, they can only contain other primitives. But JavaScript is full of objects, like the DOM is objects. Every function is an object. We have map sets, typed arrays, promises. Almost everything is an object in JavaScript. And we cannot just say, okay, you chose to use record and tuples, you cannot use objects anymore. That's not realistic. So how do you reference objects instead of records and tuples? Well, we have explored different alternatives and None of them was really good preserving uh, the security and the mutability guarantees the records and tuples give. Because if the goal, like referencing mutable objects and having full immutability are conflicting goals and there isn't a good way to make them work together. So the solution is records and tuples still cannot contain objects, but you can reference objects using like symbol placeholders. So you can put a symbol in the record and have a side table saying, okay, this symbol corresponds to this object. And then a side table 
the other way around, saying this object corresponds to this symbol, so that you have this one-to-one -one mapping and you can translate every object to a corresponding primitive. So if I want to get the onClick function for this record, I get this corresponding symbol and then I check, okay, what is the function corresponding to this symbol? And this might seem really complex, but in practice, all that part can be easily abstracted by a library. Uh, there is no library in NPM yet to do so, just because records and tuples is only a proposal and it's not uh, like implemented yet in most engines. Uh, but there is a problem with this approach, which is garbage collection. So garbage collection is a mechanism that the, the browser has to avoid using a lot of memory. So if you create many objects, as soon as those objects are not reachable anymore from your code, which means that they're not like stored in a variable or stored in a property of another object, the, the JavaScript engine can delete them from memory, thus freeing some memory. The problem with using maps is that if you put objects in maps, they cannot be garbage collected anymore because you could always like, as long as you have access to the map, you could like iterate over its elements and get all its keys. So these objects would live forever and your application would start leaking a lot of memory and at some point it might crash. And the solution to this is to use weak maps rather than maps. The only problem is that weak maps cannot contain symbols. So a third proposal, which again was born from records and tuples, is the symbols as weak map keys proposal. Uh, so what does it do? Uh, well, the name might be self-explicative, but uh, so we can divide JavaScript values in two categories. We have values that can be garbage collected and values that cannot. I'm calling them forgeable values, and I'll explain why in a moment. So, well, I'll explain it now. Let's first look at the forgeable values column. Forgeable values are values that you can recreate. So if you have a string that contains some contents, and then you later uh, like stop referencing the string, in theory, the engine could garbage collect it, but then you can create the same string again, uh, like even outside of your program. You could fetch it from a server or like create it from the number code points. So you could create the str same string again and you could observe using maps or weak maps that the original value has been deleted. On the other hand, garbage collectible values are values that you cannot recreate anymore. So if you have an object and you lose access to this object, there is no way you can create an object which is the same one. Because for two objects to be the same one, it means that not that they have the same contents, but that it was really like created in that single place. And so we have unique symbols that well are unique by definition, so they're also garbage collectible. And we have, on the other side, registered symbols, which are symbols that are not unique. And you can recreate the same symbol every time by giving to the symbol.over function the same description. It's kind of like symbol.iterator or symbol.iterator uh, symbol uh, that you can reuse many times. And lastly, with this proposal, we do also have records and tuples, which are kind of both sides. And this is kind of strange, but if you think about it, a record that contains a symbol that you cannot recreate uh, can be garbage collected because if you do not have the symbol anymore, you cannot recreate the same record anymore. While a record that contains, for example, only strings is forgeable because you can just take the same string, like recreate the same strings, put them together to create the record. At the moment, only objects are allowed as weak map keys. And as you might imagine, this proposal extends uh, the valid with my keys to also unique symbols so that uh, we can now use weak map keys to weak maps to actually have this symbol to object mapping to put things in records and tuples. So this was a very lightweight overview. I did um, uh, but there is one big question, like I've shown you, like records and tuples, change variable copy methods, symbols with my keys, but is this something that you can actually use? Like, can you go home and start using them tomorrow? Or on Monday, tomorrow and Sunday, don't use them. Uh, well, yes and no. 
So those are only proposals. They will hopefully be added to a JavaScript version in the future. Uh, they are at a good stage in the standardization process, so they, it's at this point certain that it will be added. It will take time. Uh, however, you can start using some of them. Uh, for the change array back copy, there are already many polyfills, such as ESCHIMS and CoreJS. Uh, CoreJS is quite popular, maybe some of you already use that. Uh, and also, it has been released in Safari 16 last week. So I just updated these slides yesterday night because I, I saw a tweet about the Safari release notes and change array by copy was there. So you can already start using this proposal in a browser right now. Simplest with McKees is unfortunately not polyfillable because it's adding a real new capability to the language, like something that cannot be done in any other way. And it has not been released yet in any browser. So we can only leak memory for now. One day, uh, hopefully next year, uh, browsers will start implementing Simplest with McKees and we can actually have these mappings in a, in a memory safe way. And finally, records and tuples. Well, records and tuples is new syntax, so you cannot really just polyfill that. However, there is a Babel plugin. Uh, does any one of you use Babel? Nice. Okay, there is a Babel plugin. Uh, for those who don't know, Babel lets you compile modern JavaScript syntax or proposals to older syntax so that you can use them even in older browsers or in browsers that do not support the syntax that you want to use. Uh, there is a Babel plugin that allows you to compile records and tuples so that it works in every browser. Uh, and I don't suggest using that in production because proposals can change. There are a lot of very cool JavaScript proposals uh, and it's very important that people test them uh, so that we see if they work or not, like if it's a good idea or not. But please never use those in production yet. And also we have an online playground. So uh, there is an, like, well, an online playground where you can actually type your records and tuples code and see how it works, see how quality works, uh, test. I think it also supports the change array by copy methods so you can it's kind of like a browser console, except that it supports circles and tuples. Uh, you probably don't need to copy the link. Like if you Google for record tuple playground, it will be one of the first few results. And that's all. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Like just look for me around. Uh, I'm the one with the pink hoodie. Uh, you can also contact me on Twitter for any question related, uh, like either to this proposals I'm working on or to other JavaScript proposals, uh, or I mean to anything that I do that you might want to know to want about. Or you can contact me on Matrix, which no one uses, but no, no one uses it. But in my opinion, is the best chat protocol that exists. And that's all. Thanks, and let's all have lunch now. <laughs> Thank you.